Hello, and welcome to our reviews, October of Terror! Today we'll be reviewing Walking Dead comic series 1, Zombie Roamer. So, yes, there are two zombies in this wave. This is the first one, and they're all, they're both pretty cool. They have action features, which I'm not usually a fan of, but in this case, I like it. Actually, this one is really the only one that has an action feature, but uh, they have sort of gimmicky kinds of things. They have lots of removable parts, and... He uh, has his head like splits open. It's it's actually kind of cool, and uh, the articulation on the zombies is a little bit less than the uh, the human figures, but it's not too bad still. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in for the articulation, sculpt, paint details, all those sorts of things. All right, starting off the quick size comparison, here we have our Romer zombie. This is a three and three quarter inch Marvel Universe figure, which is Wolverine, and a six inch Marvel Legends style Hellboy figure. So, kind of in between the scales there, um, I don't really know why they went with this scale, but that's what they chose to do. So let's get the other two out of here and just look at the zombie. Alright, here we have the roamer. He's got his head up here, which we'll zoom in on in a minute and take a look at all the sort of inside stuff in it. Uh, he's got two arms here, which sort of have stretching out kind of hands. They also have various pieces that break off of them, I'll look at that in a minute as well. He's got this torn blue vest here. Over his body, he also has lots of just various mutilations and things to his body in various places. Uh, sort of khaki pants down here, one of the legs is torn off. He has a sneaker on that foot and just nothing on that leg. Flip him over on the back, you can see he has this sort of knife thing in his back. That's actually a lever for part of his action feature, and then he has a little button underneath that. And it sort of, uh, sort of hides the action feature in kind of a cool way you know with the knife and stuff and then apart from that you pretty much just see the same sort of detail that you would see on the rest of the figure except on the back let's zoom in real quick on the head sculpt alright zoomed in on the head here you can see he is very grotesque looking he's got like red eyes because of a slight crease down the center of his face for his action feature um, and you can just see his mouth is open and uh, lots of really nice detail on the face sculpt here let's go ahead and look at the feature too while we're here push the button on his back his head pops open, and uh, it's like a big fountain of blood and gore and things like that, and you can sort of spread this out a little bit more. And see the uh, the details on the inside of the head? Lots of nice, gory, detail goodness. And then if you pull the lever down on his back, it sucks that back in, and you can just sort of fold his head back together, and it'll kind of stay that way if you get it just right. There we go. So, yeah, that's all really cool. Really nice head sculpt and a uh, pretty cool action feature. Now let's zoom out and look at some articulation. All right, articulation-wise, like I said, the zombies are not quite as good as the human characters. He has nothing in the head because of his action feature. Ball joint shoulders in and out, forward and back. Um, it looks like that would be a bicep cut, but that's actually a detaching point there. Then he has a single-jointed elbow and nothing in the wrist. We're also going to look at all of his detachable pieces while we're doing this. So that detaches, and then on the other side, looks like it might be a wrist cut. Nope, another detachable piece. So now you can have him wandering around, lacking arms, and having his head all splayed open, looking something like that. Anyway, cut joints down here at the hips on both sides. Thigh cut on this side, but not on the other side. No idea why. Single joint knees. And then on the side with the shoe, it rotates... And it feels like it might very slightly pivot. So that is his articulation. Like I said, not quite as good as the human characters, but still pretty decent. Um, mostly losing a little bit of mobility down there in the hips and stuff. But uh, very nicely articulated, and you can get him into some nice shambling poses, missing body parts, and all that kind of stuff. He does come with one accessory, so let's look at that really quick. Here is his one accessory. He comes with an axe. It is kind of meant to be shoved into a small gap in the top of his head and sort of work with the head splitting action. But apart from that, it's just a, uh, it's the same as Rick's axe, except it's red. I don't know if it's painted red or if it's supposed to be the blood. I mean, I know it's painted red, but I don't know if it's, like, supposed to be a red axe or if that's supposed to be blood, because it's, like, entirely red. Uh, anyway, it is the same sculpt as Rick's axe, though. It has a little notch there and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool and uh, somewhat useful. Now that's all for his accessories. Let's move on to the packaging. All right, he comes in the same packaging as everything else in the first series does. Big window here, Walking Dead, Zombie Roamer down there at the bottom. 
and it mentions uh, removable body parts there instead of a number for articulation. On the back, lists other figures in the Swave and shows off all their action features and stuff like that. As I have been saying, these are good for in or out of package display, so yeah, Zombie Roamer. Alright, that wraps it up for the Zombie Roamer, so until next time, goodbye! Hello, you've just watched one of my videos. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed my videos. If you didn't, run away. Run away and never return. Also, feel free to check out my other channels. Venom Raptor for all my variety gaming content and VR reviews for reviews of various action figures and collectibles. Thank you and goodbye.